Workers don't want to strike. Workers are forced to strike. When these CEOs and companies cry poor and pretend like they ain't got the money to pay their employees while the CEOs are making a quarter of a billion a year, the workers who are just trying to be able to afford rent and groceries are forced to strike. And workers risk it all when they go on strike. When they're striking, they're not getting paid, and most are living paycheck to paycheck. But they strike because it's a vital instrument against a tyrannical workplace. It's the only way to grind these companies to a halt and make them appreciate the people who make the companies money. And sometimes you'll even hear other working class people say, well, if you don't like it, go get another job. Besides that being dumb and promoting a fascist workplace most working class jobs don't pay that differently the majority of working class american jobs pay a wage that's created an economy where people live paycheck to paycheck and if you've ever negotiated with a company you know they do their best to pay you the least because in capitalism only profits matter this is the way the workers coming together and uniting tips the scales of power back in favor of the workers. Sometimes it's the only way to get a company to pay attention. There's also such an irony about this because most companies will tell you their employees are the lifeblood of the company. The only reason we made record historical profits is because of our workforce. And then when their workers say, we can't afford to eat and pay rent, they pretend like they can't hear them. I might be showing my age here, but hey, did you know that even the cast of Friends went on strike? That's right, when Ross and Rachel were offered a million dollars per episode, they went back to the rest of the cast and said, hey, we don't think this is right. Ross and Rachel might be a drive-in love story, but there's a bigger cast that makes this show. And I agree with them. Ross sucks. So the cast of Friends United went on strike until they all got equal pay. And they won it. Also, side note. If you're negotiating for a new job and they ask you, what are you making at your old one? Tell them it's a few bucks more. But if your coworkers ask you what you're making, make sure you're sharing and open with it because companies and CEOs and management have created this taboo around sharing your wage. They only do that because they benefit. The less you know about what other people are making, the better chance companies have at keeping you underpaid. Once you start talking about your wages, you might realize you've been there for years and years, but only making a few more cents than a guy that was just hired. So share your wage. Work is all about a power structure. Some power is created by money, most power is created by the people. And workers coming together in solidarity creates a power that a worker alone just doesn't have. In most American companies, CEOs and board members hold all the power. And what have they done with that power? Reward themselves greedily with quarter of a billion dollar salaries off the work of their employees. While those employees can hardly afford to live, the only way to combat CEO greed is workers joining in solidarity. And when workers join together to fight for better conditions, they're fighting for every worker everywhere. These greedy CEOs and greedy board members, they don't have to worry about rent. They don't have to worry about choosing between gas money and food. All they worry about is the size of their yacht. Workers are in a fight for survival. Greed is the oppressing force over every worker, but we can change that when we fight together. Power to the people.